Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the pi molecular orbitals of cyclopentadienyl anion C5H5 with a minus one charge. Notice here a representation of the planar structure of cyclopentadienyl anion. And we also demonstrate one of the symmetry operations, a C2 rotation that flips, so to speak, the ring around this line that goes through one of the carbon atoms in the five membered ring. Here we see a depiction of a C5 rotation, rotation of 72 degrees, and notice that if we do this, that the molecule looks exactly the same as it did before, thereby showing that a C5 rotation, a rotation of 72 degrees, is a symmetry operation of the point group of the molecule. The point group for this particular molecule is D5H. Here we see a representation of a vertical mirror, the so-called sigma v. Note that the molecule also possesses a horizontal mirror, which is a mirror exactly in the plane of the molecule, because the molecule is planar. It is that horizontal mirror, which is not shown here, that leads to our point group assignment of D5H. Here we show the numbering scheme that we are going to use for the five carbon atoms in the five membered ring of cyclopentadienyl anion. For brevity, for the remainder of the video, we are going to restrict our attention to the five membered carbon ring. And because we're looking at the pi molecular system, we're interested in the pz orbitals on the five carbon atoms. And these are perpendicular to the plane of the ring. Note an important feature of p orbitals is that they have two phases. They have a positive phase, negative phase, shown here by contrasting white or shaded gray coloration. The first step in our derivation is to construct table one. And we make one column for each class in the group D5H, and we list as the heading the symmetry operations in that class. This is the way that we are going to generate a reducible representation for the pi bonding in this particular molecule. Once we have done that, the next step would be to reduce the reducible representation to a linear combination of irreducible representations. First, let's generate this reducible representation for the pi bonding in cyclopentadienyl anion. The first class listed is the E operation, the identity. And we notice that if we start with the position at the left and then proceed to the position to the right of the arrow, that every single orbital stays in exactly the same position, which makes sense since it's the identity. Therefore, the number of atoms that don't move, number of orbitals that don't move, is five. As we noted, all five of the p orbitals stay exactly where they were. So because five stayed put, we enter a five in blue in our table in the column that is headed by the one E. The E stands for the identity operation. And we put a character of five because we want to put down the number of orbitals that don't move under each and every uh, class of the point group.
here we see the effect of the C5 operation, a 72 degree counterclockwise rotation. It takes one goes to where two was, two goes to where three was, uh, three goes to where four was. So we see that each and every P orbital has moved to a new location. Since none of them are staying where they were before, the character that we are going to enter into the table is a zero. Here we enter that zero into the table in the column headed by C5. Now we perform the C5 squared operation. This is a C5 followed by another counterclockwise C5. As a result of this operation, we can see the starting and final locations of each of the p orbitals, and we notice that each and every orbital has moved, so therefore zero of the orbitals have stayed put, therefore our character to be entered in the table is going to be a zero. Here we have a C2 rotation about an axis that runs through carbon number one and between carbons three and four. So one stays where it was, but we notice that it's changed the orientation of the phases so that the positive phase is now in the negative phase location and the negative phase is in the positive phase location. The way that we represent that in our table is as a character of minus one. The one tells us that it stayed where it was, the minus tells us that it has changed polarity. Here we see the effect of the horizontal mirror plane, sigma h. This plane runs through the uh, plane of the five-membered ring and has the effect of reflecting below the ring to above the ring. You notice that none of the uh, p orbitals changes its location, but each and every one changes its phase relationship. So therefore, our character in the table will be a minus five, the minus reflecting the fact that we have a change of phase. Next, we see the effect of an S5 rotation. This is an improper rotation of one fifth of a circle, and it consists of an C5 rotation followed by reflection through the horizontal mirror. And we can see the effect of this uh, operation on the individual orbitals. As soon as we do the C5 operation, though, we notice that each and every one of the orbitals has moved. Since none of them stays put, we know that the character for this entry has to be zero. Here is the S5 squared symmetry operation, which is an S5 followed by another S5. We notice because an S5 is a C5 followed by a reflection through the horizontal mirror, that as soon as we make that rotation, all of the P orbitals have moved. Therefore, the character for this class of operations is again going to be a zero.
Next, we have a Sigma V, a vertical mirror. And the one that we're going to illustrate here runs through the carbon number one atom, and it runs along the uh, orange line shown on the right-hand side. And the plane of the mirror runs through this line and is perpendicular to the plane of the ring. The only orbital that's not affected by the operation actually lies along it, the uh, P1 orbital. So therefore, only one uh, orbital stays put, so our character is going to be a 1 for this operation. Our next step is to reduce the reducible representation. To do this, we first proceed with uh, recognizing the number of operations in the group, which is 20. So we have our 1 divided by 20 before a series of terms. In the following terms, the red number, as we see in the table, is the number of operations in the class. The second number, which is in blue, is the character from the reducible representation. And the third number, which is shown in black italic, comes from the character in the character table for that particular irreducible representation. So here we see A1 prime for the group, uh, for the operation E. That's the first number one. We only need to uh, concern ourselves with those classes in the reducible representation that have characters that are in zero. So we notice we have a five, a minus one, a minus five, and a positive one, which correspond to the E operation, the five C2s, the one sigma H, and the five sigma Vs. So when we multiply these particular terms together and then multiply by the one divided by 20, we get a zero or we'll get a positive whole number. We notice in this particular case that we get the number zero. This tells us that we have no copies of the A1 prime irreducible representation in our reducible representation. Next. For the irreducible representation A2 prime, notice that the characters from the character table, which are shown in black italics, are 1, minus 1, 1, and then minus 1. As a result, we see that this reduction formula gives us a value of 0, which tells us that we have no A2 primes in the reducible representation or pi bonding in this molecule. Now, when we apply the formula for the irreducible representation A2 double prime, which has characters 1, minus 1, minus 1, and positive 1 in the irreducible representation uh, in the character table for D5H, we get the result of the calculation is a 1. This tells us that we have one copy of the A2 double prime irreducible representation that is inside, as a linear combination, inside the reducible representation 
for pi bonding in the cyclopentadienyl anion. We see for E1 double prime that we have one copy of that irreducible representation in the reducible representation for pi bonding. And finally, we have one copy of the E2 double prime irreducible representation. Therefore, the reducible representation is a linear combination of A2 double prime, E1 double prime, and E2 double prime. Since we started with five p orbitals, that must give five molecular orbitals. And it may appear at first sight that we only have found three. Now recall that the E1 double prime and E2 double prime are each doubly degenerate. Because they're doubly degenerate, we count them each as two. So one plus two plus two does indeed give us five irreducible representations, each irreducible representation uh, accounting for one of the pi molecular orbitals in this particular anion. Now, we want to generate mathematical expressions for each and every one of the pi molecular orbitals. To do this, we first construct table two. And in table two, notice that we have a heading for each and every symmetry operation, not just every class. We have taken the uh, step of bracketing off each of the individual classes for convenience later on. One important feature of the operations in any one class is that they all have the exact same character in the character table. So to reduce errors later on, we have put the vertical lines, again corresponding to each class, to remind us that all the operations within uh, those two vertical lines will have the same character in the character table. But what we are going to do first is take one representative p orbital, which we call uh, phi one here, and see how it transforms under each of the symmetry operations. That is a fancy way of saying, we're gonna start with F1 and then apply each of the various symmetry operations to it and see where it goes. Does it stay at phi one or does it move to some other phi two through phi five? And then we will construct this table and use it to generate a mathematical expression for the pi molecular orbitals. E, the identity operation, takes phi1 to phi1. Therefore, our character in the table two will be phi one. The phi five operation takes phi one to phi two as shown here. Therefore the character will be phi two. The second C5 operation is C5 to the minus one, the clockwise rotation, which takes phi one to phi five. C5 squared means two C5 operations in a row, which takes phi1 
first to phi2, and then from phi2 to phi3. So the character will be phi3. The second phi5 squared involves a clockwise rotation first by phi5, and then another clockwise rotation. So this takes phi1 to phi4. The C2 operation actually goes through carbon number one, and the effect is to flip the orbital over. So the character becomes minus V1. If we take the C2 axis running through carbon 4, this flips phi1 to minus phi2. Now we take the C2 running through carbon 2, and that transforms C1 into minus C3. We take the C2 running through carbon 5, that transforms C1 into minus C4. Our last uh, C2 axis goes through carbon number three, so that transforms C1 into minus C5. It's minus because we've changed the phase relationship. The horizontal mirror sigma h transforms v1 into minus v1 since we have the change of phase. So starting with A2 double prime, 
we notice that all the characters in the character table for D5H for the irreducible representation A2 double prime are ones or minus ones. And you go character by character, uh, class by class, and multiply the character in the character table times the character in table two, and then take the linear combination. If we reduce to lowest terms, we get V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 plus V5. And we do the same thing for E1 double prime and E2 double prime. You get somewhat more complicated expressions because of the presence of the cosine of 72 degrees and cosine of 144 degrees in the character table. And then we will use those representations to give a visual representation of those molecular orbitals. For E2 double prime, we notice that all the coefficients are positive and they have the same value of one. So therefore, each of the p orbitals makes an equal contribution and they are all in phase with each other. They have the same phase relationship. So it is an overall binding orbital with no nodes. For the E1 double prime, we notice that we have varying size coefficients, and we also have positive and negative coefficients. So all the p orbitals with a positive coefficient, phi1, phi2, and phi5, have the same phase relationship as each other, and this is opposite to the phase relationship for the phi3 and phi4 orbitals. And then we get a uh, pictorial representation of the phase relationships in the figure shown. For the E2 double prime pi molecular orbital, we have this particular representation. And we notice that phi1, phi3, and phi4 have the same phase relationship as each other and it is opposite to the phase for phi2 and phi5. Notice that for the sake of brevity, we have not specifically normalized this particular molecular orbital, but that does not detract from the phase relationships and the node relationships that we are able to determine using group, group theoretical methods. Using the projection operator method, we were able to find one E1 double prime molecular orbital, but we were not able to directly find both. To find the second one, we start with our representation mathematically of E1 double prime, which is our phi1 plus cosine 72 and so on. And then we apply a C5 operation to it. And we know that C5 takes phi1 to phi2, phi2 to phi3, and so on. This result is not the new orbital, but is a linear combination. So after we use the C5 operator, we subtract the two representations to get this 0.69 phi1 minus 0.69 phi2, and this is the other E1 double prime orbital. And here in a figure, we sketch the other E1 double prime molecular orbital, showing that phi1 and phi5 have the same phase relationship, that phi2 and phi3 are the same as each other and different than 1 and 5. And we notice here that phi4 does not contribute to this particular molecular orbital. we realize that we have not found the other member of the E2 double prime pair. So we take our mathematical representation for that orbital and then use the C5 operator upon it to get a second expression. And then we subtract that expression from the original E2 double prime. And that is how we are able to obtain the other E2 double prime orbital.
this orbital, as well as the other member of the E1 double prime, we notice does not have a contribution for the phi4 orbital. And we have two orbitals with the same phase relationship as each other and opposite to the other two uh, p orbitals. To assign relative energies for these orbitals, we want to notice the node relationships. And we notice that for the A2 double prime orbital, there is no points at which the wave function goes from positive to negative through zero other than the plane of the molecule. So we notice that this particular orbital has zero molecular nodes. Here we notice that E1 double prime has one node, which is showed along the orange line. The other E1 double prime also has one node. This is crucial. If we have two members of the degenerate pair, they must have exactly the same number of nodes. So we see the one node shown along the orange line for the other E1 double prime pi molecular orbital. For the first of the E2 double primes, we see that it has two nodes, which are shown uh, in the diagram as the crossing orange lines. Anywhere where the phase relationship goes from positive to negative through zero is going to be a node. Here is the second E2 double prime molecular orbital showing that it, like its partner, has exactly two molecular nodes shown along the orange line. We can construct an energy diagram showing the pi molecular orbitals for the cyclopentadienyl anion by using the fact that in general, the more nodes a molecular orbital has, the higher in energy it will be. So we notice that the A2 double prime has no nodes, so it will be lowest in energy. The doubly degenerate E1 double prime has one molecular node, so it's next in energy. And that the E2 double prime uh, molecular orbital has two nodes, so it will be highest in energy. We also realize that as a neutral species, uh, cyclopentadiene would have five pi electrons. Once we have the anion, we have an extra pi electron. It has six. It has the magic 4n plus 2 Huckel number of electrons. So we can completely fill up the A2 double prime and the E1 double prime levels, thereby accounting for the aromatic stability that we see in cyclopentadienyl anions. I thank you very much for your attention, and as always, have a good one.